Hi everyone, this is Benjamin from English Classes Online. In today's video, we are going to look at Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. And we are specifically going to examine the background, the setting, the plot summary, and the dramatic techniques. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Make sure you click on the bell icon as well, so that whenever a new video goes live on the channel, you will be notified instantly. Let's dive into the lesson right away. And I want to begin by looking at, uh, you know, the comment from our comment section, which actually uh, prompted or necessitated this uh, lesson, if you like. This comment came from James Isaiah, and it came one month ago. I apologize for the delayed response, but I want to assure you that all of you out there, our viewers and subscribers, are highly esteemed. And if you have made any requests, from us, uh, definitely we are going to respond to it in spite of the, the, the workload, in spite of the, you know, very busy schedule that we have. So James, Isaiah, if you are watching this video, this is in direct response to the request you made. And James, Isaiah, wrote as follows can you please show me these things background of the play of the playwright background of the play setting of the play plot summary dramatic techniques yes and then he made this comment in respect of look back by james uh, by john Os osborne so let's dive into it let's begin with the lesson objectives okay at the end of the lesson you should be able to explain the following one setting of the play two background of the play and this includes uh, the background of the playwright and the background of the play itself then number three the plot summary number four the dramatic techniques those so these are the uh, various items on our agenda for this lesson. So let's begin to take them one by one. Well, I would like us to begin with the setting, okay? The play is set in the England of the 1950s. It depicts the socioeconomic situation in England shortly after World War II, when the country was counting her losses. You know, setting includes place and time. The specific location of the play is a one-room attic apartment in the Midlands of England. This large room is the home of Jimmy Potter, his wife, Alison, and his partner and girlfriend, uh, I, sorry, his partner and friend, of course, Cliff Lewis, who has a separate bedroom across the hall. Well, let's now look at the background of the playwright. John James Osborne was born on December 12, 1929, in Fulham, southwest London. His father, Thomas Godfrey uh, Osborne, was then a commercial artist and copywriter his mother, Nelly Beatrice Groove Osborne, worked as a barmaid in pubs uh, most of her life. So you can see that, you know, the background of James Osborne is similar to the background of the, of the, the main character in this play. Much of Osborne's childhood was spent in near poverty and he suffered from frequent extended illnesses. He was deeply affected by his father's death from tuberculosis in 1941 and also remembered vividly the air raids 
and general excitement of war. So uh, Osborne actually, uh, you know, was uh, one of the people in that period that actually felt the the aftermath of the war. Osborne attended state schools until the age of 12 when he was awarded a scholarship to attend the minor private school, St. Michael's College in Barnstaple, Devon. He was expelled at the age of 16 after the headmaster slapped Osborne's face and Osborne hit him back. After spending some time at home, he took a series of jobs writing copy for various trade journals. So you, you, if you want to read the complete, um, you know, uh, biography, then you can refer to book right. You can see the, uh, you can see the link, the web link here. Okay. Now, look back in anger. Nineteen fifty six is a is a a. a a realist play is realistic. You know, when a play is realistic, it is based on, you know, real life situations, okay? So look back and in anger, written or published in 1956, is a realist play written by John Osborne. It focuses on the life and marital struggles of an intelligent and educated but disaffected young man of working class origin named Jimmy Potter and his equally competent yet impassive upper middle class wife, Alison, all right? The supporting characters include Cliff Lewis, an amiable Welsh lodger who attempts to keep the peace, and Helena Charles, Alison's snobbish friend, okay? So that is exactly, uh, we, this is taken, of course, from uh, Wikipedia, okay? And then we continue. Osborne drew inspiration from his personal life and failing marriage with Pamela Lane while writing Look Back in Anger, which was his first successful outing as a playwright. So you can see that there is a similarity between the background of the playwright and the play itself. Because, you know, most of the time, uh, writers take something from their personal experience into their writing, okay? Now, the play spawned the term angry young men to describe Osborne and those of his generation who employed the harshness of realism in the theater in contrast to the more escapist theater that characterized the previous generation. This harsh realism has led to look back in anger, being considered one of the first examples of kitchen sink drama in theater. So if you want uh, to read the full uh, write-up, you know, part of the background of the playwright, you can refer to Wikipedia. Uh, the link is included here, okay? Now let's continue and uh, now look at, look more at the playwright's background. Now Osborne had many affairs over the course of his life and frequently mistreated his wives and lovers. So you can see uh, some similarity between Osborne himself and his main, the main character in his play, Jimmy Potter. He was married five times. Imagine all marriages except his last being on happy unions, you see. His wives and lovers were not always kept apart either. In his 2006 biography, uh, John Helpen describes at length a holiday in Valbon, France, in 1961 that Osborne shared with Tony Richardson, a distraught Judge Devin uh, and others, feigning a bafflement over the romantic entanglements of the time, helping writes as follows. 
let's see. Osborne is on a beseeched holiday with his aggrieved mistress while having a passionate affair with his future third wife as the founding artistic director of the royal court has a, a, a nervous breakdown and his current wife gives birth to a son that isn't his, you see? So there is something in the playwright's background that is reflected in the play, in the play's characters, okay? Then John Osborne died on December 24, 1994, two weeks after his 65th birthday. So much for the background of the play, right? So we are now going to look at the background of the play, okay? Background of the play. In examining the background of a play, we are taking a close look at the social, historical, and cultural context of the events portrayed in the play, okay? Now, talking about the social, uh, we are referring to the society portrayed in the play, particularly their socioeconomic life, as can be seen in the lives of the characters. Then, his, in the aspect of the historical, it refers to the events in the past that may have led to the current situation the characters are facing. Of course, we have referred to the, you know, World War II as a major event that has created the harsh economic situation or socioeconomic situation in, in the Britain of this period that the play is set. Then the cultural ref is reflected in the views and practices of the characters, including their religious views, superstitions, family values, morals, and ethics. So now let's dive into the background uh, directly. Now the play Look Back in Anger by John Osborne, Osborne is centered around the first generation that came of age during the post-World War II deprivations that affected uh, the British society. The entire play depicts the extreme anger generated by man's tendency to focus on the past instead of living in the present or looking ahead to the future. The play's protagonist, Jimmy Potter, is always angry because of his inability to attain a greater height in life in spite of his university education. Okay? Moreover, the play I mean, the play itself is a reflection of the playwright John Osborne's unhappy marriage to actress Pamela Jane, I mean Pamela Lane, please, and their life in a cramped accommodation in Derby. So you can see, you know, the similarity between the background of the playwright and the background of the play. The play is the portrayal of the post-war situation that gave rise to the Angry Young Men movement in British theater. Look Back in Anger is about the sad situation that faced the younger generation of that period and how disappointed they were with the British society. In the play, we find Jimmy Potter, a working class young man, complaining bitterly about the situation in the British society of that post-war period. According to him, there aren't any good brave causes left in the Britain of the 1950s, you see. Now let's look at the plot summary. The play portrays the effects of the post-war situation in the British society on the citizens of England. There was the uh, World War II and after that, uh, the, 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 the generation in which Osborne lived and in which the characters uh, that, or in which the people represented by the characters in the play lived, actually uh, is a socio economically disadvantaged uh, era, you know, or, or people or generation, if you like, because things were not really uh, quite good or rosy, okay? The story revolves around Jimmy, a well-educated but tragic character. He is unhappy about the happenings in his life 
and in his society. He lives in an attic flat with his wife, Alison, and his business partner, Cliff Lewis, with whom he runs a candy stall in an outdoor market. Okay? Jimmy is not happy with his job and believes that he deserves more. He is hot-tempered and always expresses his anger about many issues and happenings around him. He is looking back to the past age in Britain when the old British Empire was a powerful country. This is probably what the title of the play is all about. Look back in anger. Jimmy seems to have accepted suffering as the only way to experience true human emotion. So he believes that Alison and other upper class people are less alive than he is because they are unaware of the real feelings of the average struggling citizen, okay? He easily gets angry and uses every occasion to vent his anger and frustration on his wife, Alison. He often insults his wife, rains abuses on her family. When Helena Charles, one of Alison's upper class friends, visits the family and notices how Jimmy abuses Alison, Helena is baffled and questions the appropriateness of their marriage. Acting on Helena's advice, Alison decides to leave Jimmy. Ironically, after his wife leaves, uh, Jimmy decides, after deciding to confront Helena, uh, Jimmy and Helena suddenly begin to live together as a couple, quite ironically. The situation changes when Alison returns to Jimmy after suffering a miscarriage. At this juncture, Helena reconciles with Alison. Obviously, Helena feels guilty having betrayed her friend. Helena decides to leave while Alison and Jimmy come back together and try to live as a couple once again. Now, more on the plot summary. The conflict between the upper class and the middle class in England is portrayed vividly in the play. Jimmy Potter belongs to the middle class, the less privileged workers, whereas his wife, Alison, comes from an upper class family, okay? So we find Jimmy venting his anger on a member of the upper class to which his wife belongs. Jimmy represents the underprivileged British youth who are frustrated with the situation in the country. When Jimmy lashes out at his wife, he is not only venting his frustration on her, but also taking a revenge on the upper middle class, which he detests. He wants Alison to see eye to eye with him on those issues that he feels so passionately about. In other words, he wants her to denounce her upper class background. Jimmy often directs his harsh attacks against Alison's mother, who represents the upper middle class. His wife's friend, Helena, who also comes from the upper class, receives some doses of Jimmy's attacks. This is Jimmy's way of expressing his anger at the marginalization, deprivation, and limitations which he believes are imposed on him by the upper class. Okay, so that's exactly the way it is. And uh, so let's now go ahead and look at the dramatic techniques. Now we want to begin by, you know, looking at a number of images. In Look Back in Anger, Osborne uses a number of images and symbols as literary devices to convey his message more clearly. Some of them are as follows, and we want to begin with imageries of bear, squirrel, and mouse. They are images of animals. Now, Jimmy and Allison often use bear and squirrel to refer to each other, and they often play the bear and squirrel game. They also have a large tattered toy bear and soft woolly squirrel. These are symbols uh, that seem to highlight the difference between the two characters. Jimmy is the bear, aggressive and ready to tear the squirrel to pieces. The squirrel is tender and often helpless in the face of the bear. Jimmy and Allison seem to be incompatible in terms of their temperaments, 
yet they somehow find a way of sticking together as lovers. Cliff refers to himself as a mouse. Jimmy comments that Cliff gets more like a little mouse every day. Cliff admits, I am a mouse, I am a mouse, I am a randy little mouse. However, he, Cliff, calls uh, Jimmy a stinking old bear. So you can see these uh, images are used in, you know, depicting the characters and using the characters themselves to also portray the situation of things. How, you know, the situation, the harsh economic situation, the harsh socioeconomic situation in the society has actually affected uh, the, the, the psyche of the average man. And of course, we can see the aggression in Jimmy, who now uh, can be likened to a beer, okay? And then we find some, uh, especially the, the female gender, now become the victims of the male aggression, okay? Now, let's continue to look at other dramatic techniques. And we want to look at images of other animals, you know? Images of a number of animals are used to highlight the abusive character of Jimmy. For example, Jimmy calls Allison's mother, a rhinoceros, in labor, a, a female bitch, okay? And an overfed, overprivileged old bitch. You see, these are all abusive uh, words. These highlight anger and abuse that have dominated the life of Jimmy. He also calls Helena a bitch and a cow who seems to have become a sacred cow as well. His wife, Alison, is a victim of similar abusive outbursts. When he gets angry, uh, when Jimmy gets angry, Alison becomes a stupid bitch, or he could easily compare her to a python in his self-pity or to show how helpless he is in the relationship he, he shares with Alison. He compares himself with an overlarge rabbit. He believes that women have the tendency to destroy men's lives. He refers to women in love as pythons. He even sings about this and insists, avoid that old python coil. Okay. Now, uh, we want to look at the symbol of the church of the church bell. That's another uh, symbol used. You know, a symbol is uh, something that is used to represent an idea when you use a word in, lit in a literary work or you use even the image of it artistically. Yeah, I mean, that becomes a symbol. Okay, so the church bell is used as a symbol to represent something, okay, to represent an idea or a theme, okay, or to highlight a social issue or a social problem, if you like. The playwright uses church bells as symbols to portray the religious background of the British society. Alison and Helena are comfortable with this religious background whereas Jimmy is opposed to it. Jimmy protests against the hypocrisy of that religious institution, but Alison and Helena are in support of it. So whenever the church bell goes, it actually, you know, raises certain issues in their mind. Now, this highlights differences in their perception of religion and tradition. Alison and Helena come from the traditional background where the church is held in high esteem, unlike Jimmy, who sees religion as another instrument of oppression. Okay? Now, sim the symbol of Jimmy's trumpet, you know, Jimmy has a trumpet. Jimmy uses his trumpet not only to express his feelings, but also to escape from the agonies and frustrations of the oppressive society in which he has found himself. Okay? Jimmy represents the young people in the post-war British society who are so frustrated in life that they often look uh, 
for ways of sharing their feelings through music and other forms of entertainment. In various societies today, it is common to find youths who are alienated from the society, resorting to music, drugs, cultism, and so forth. You know, just anything that will actually help them to escape from the harsh realities of the, the society they live in. So even today, we find a lot of uh, youths who uh, actually um, resorting to music as a way of, you know, trying to uh, trying to express themselves and trying to escape from the situations in the society. So now, the symbol of Jimmy's old shirt, that's another thing. In the play, we find Alison putting on Jimmy's old shirt while having her expensive skirt underneath. This symbol is used to highlight the psychological dilemma a young woman from the upper class background faces when she falls in love with a man from the lower class or from the middle class, if you like. Jimmy is from a poor background, whereas Alison is from a rich family. Their love for each other has brought them together. For her to have put on Jimmy's old shirt with the expensive skirt underneath suggests her partial acceptance of Jimmy's way of life and beliefs while still retaining some of her upper class beliefs. So sometimes you find some uh, crisis brewing between such couples, you know. Uh, the lady is from the upper class society. The young man is a struggling young man. And so you, you find that they are coming from different backgrounds and then they, they, there is a clash, you know. Uh, there is a clash. Uh, of uh, beliefs, there is a clash of ideologies, there is a clash of uh, everything because each of them is taking something from the background that they belong to. And so one has to submit to the other. And naturally, the man would want the woman to submit. Okay. And so we, here we find uh, Alison putting on Jimmy's old shirt and still having her very expensive skirt underneath. So this is somebody coming from an, a very wealthy background, but she's now putting up with uh, a struggling young man who actually is aggressively trying to bring her to his level, okay? So that is exactly how it has been in today's uh, video. We have actually been looking at Look Back in Anger, by uh, John Osborne. And we have looked at the various aspects uh, of the play. We began by looking at the setting. Of course, we began with the, the background and then we looked at, we began with the setting quite all right. Then we looked at the background of the play, uh, of the playwright and of the play, we looked at the plot summary and then we looked at the various dramatic techniques, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video and share the video with your friends and relations, okay? If you are new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and subscribe uh, also. Uh, as you subscribe, make sure you also click on the bell icon so you also not, uh, activate the notification system uh, so that whenever a new video goes live on the channel, you will be notified instantly. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, kindly leave them in the comment section below. If you browse through the description section, you will find a number of resources that will be helpful to you uh, in not only in learning aspects of the English language and literature in English, but also uh, learning how to use language as a powerful tool for creating content. So on this channel, we teach English, <coughs> English language, and we also teach uh, content creation because we believe that if you gain proficiency in the use of a language, then you can use that language as a tool for creating content. And if you are able to create 
valuable content, then you have the right to monetize that content and use it to create multiple streams of income for yourself. So here we teach you all these various aspects. For example, you can join our training program on how to set up an online teaching business. You can also uh, join our training program uh, for IELTS, you know, IELTS, for those of you who are going to take the test. And uh, you can also join the course uh, for the alternative IELTS, alternative to IELTS, which is Duolingo English test. Uh, we help to prepare you adequately for uh, each of these tests. So whichever one you are going for, you can click on the link and join uh, our training course. And of course, you will find a number of others. If you scroll down in the, I mean, in the description section, you will find a link uh, that will enable you to download a free PDF ebook on the basic units of English grammar. Then you will find other eBooks, both for English learning and also for uh, skill development. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you for being part of today's episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Goodbye for now and remain blessed. <laughs>